Hello, today we're going to discuss simple harmonic motion. Simple harmonic motion has several properties that are required in order for an object to be described as moving with simple harmonic motion. The first is that it is periodic. The object's motion repeats at a constant period of oscillation. Secondly, the force acting on the object always acts toward the equilibrium position. Okay, which is the position it would be in if the system were not agitated at all. The third main component of simple harmonic motion is that the restoring force must increase as the distance from the equilibrium position increases. So the further you are from that rest position, the greater the force is that's going to pull you back toward the rest position. And finally, the object will move fastest as it travels through the equilibrium position. Some basic definitions that hopefully you prob probably already know, but we'll go over it again just to make sure. Period of oscillation is the time for one round trip. So uh, for a pendulum, it's the time it takes to go there and back. Frequency is the number of oscillations per unit time measured in hertz. The relationship between period and frequency is that they are inverses of each other. So the period is the inverse of the frequency, and the frequency is the inverse of the period. The last definition that we need to know to go forward is amplitude. Amplitude is the maximum distance away an object travels from its equilibrium position. Looking at this graph, we see a position versus time graph of an object that follows simple harmonic motion. Notice that it is a sine-like curve. Okay, Actually, this is a cosine curve because it starts at an amplitude. Okay, if it were to start at zero, then it would have been a sine curve, but it starts at an amplitude value. Okay, hopefully we remember from circular motion that omega equals 2 pi over the period. Okay, in this case, notice that on our graph here, it is with respect to time. So in our function here, x equals a cosine 2 pi ft, we want to get x in terms of time. Okay we are taking the cosine of this. So it has to be the cosine of some trig value, in this case, or sorry, some degree measure, in this case, radians, okay? Because we know that omega for an object that travels in a circle and then also for a simple harmonic oscillator is two pi radians per the period, okay? So the fraction of the value we get would be taking the cosine of 2 pi over the period times the time, okay? And in this case, in order to get everything fitting on the same line, we know that 1 over period equals frequency. So the function they give you on your formula sheet, even though it's not my personal favorite function, is a times the cosine of 2 pi ft. The easiest way to do these types of problems is to, in order to analyze this, is to identify the important parts. So whatever comes out in front of the cosine is the amplitude. That's going to be some distance measure. And then whatever is in front of the time is equal to 2 pi times the frequency. Okay? We'll talk about more about that in class. Okay, now we see some position, velocity, and acceleration graphs for a simple harmonic oscillator. Okay, so I'm gonna label some important parts here. The first one is the period. Okay, period is the time it takes to go round trip. So if we start here, we go there and then come, come back. So this was one period of oscillation right here, that's T. Okay, same thing here. Here's the second period right here, so this is 2T. Okay, same thing as we look down here on our velocity graph. We have T. 2t, and then our acceleration graph, t, and then again, 2t. Hopefully you see some patterns here. First thing, remember that in order to get velocity, it's equal to the slope of the position versus time graph. So if we notice here, we find the slope of our tangent line up here, we see that when our displacement is at a maximum, which is here, 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 
we notice that our velocity corresponds and is zero at those places, which makes sense. At the maximum amplitude, our simple harmonic oscillator is changing direction. If it's changing direction, it must stop when doing so. One of the requirements of simple harmonic motion is that the maximum acceleration occurs when the displacement is the maximum. So we notice that corresponding here as well. We have these maximum acceleration values when our displacement is at a maximum. When our displacement is at a minimum, which would be here, where I'm putting the blue X's, you'll see that the corresponding, our velocities are at maximum values, which I'm putting the blue X's. And again, our accelerations are zero, because when it's at the equilibrium position, there is no acceleration. It's already at the equilibrium position. Okay. All right, we have two main types of simple harmonic oscillators. The first one is a pendulum. As the distance the, from equilibrium increases, which is the amplitude here, the amplitude is measured for a pendulum as the angle measure, okay? Measured in angle in radians or degrees theta. The component of gravity pulling the pendulum toward the equilibrium position increases. So that's the sign that we see that the force is increasing, the restoring force to pull the pendulum back to its equilibrium position is also increasing. The period of oscillation of a simple pendulum depends on the length of the pendulum and the acceleration due to gravity. We're not going to go through the whole derivation here, but when you find the period of oscillation of a pendulum, the only two things that matter are the length of the pendulum, which is L, and the acceleration due to gravity, which is g. So as you notice, the longer your pendulum is, the greater the period of oscillation will be. And the lower the acceleration due to gravity, the longer the period of oscillation would be. So if you go to the moon, a clock that you have programmed to oscillate every one second on the Earth, if you took it to the moon, its period of oscillation would be longer because the acceleration due to gravity on the moon would be less. Our other main type of simple harmonic oscillator are springs. The springs we're going to look at follow Hooke's law, and that's what we call an ideal spring or a Hookean spring. Okay, so let's put ideal. And when it's ideal, what it means is that it follows Hooke's law. So as this x value, the distance from the axis or from the equilibrium position increases, the force increases, which is one of our requirements for simple harmonic motion. The other thing we notice here is this negative sign. Okay, the negative sign tells us that the force, the direction of the force, is opposite the direction of x. So if x is pushed inward, so if we compress the spring, the force will push back outward on the object. And if we stretch the spring, the spring will pull back toward us. Okay? Here's this little diagram showing what Hooke's Law is. Basically, here's what's important about Hooke's Law. It takes twice as much force to stretch a twing to stretch a spring twice as far. Goodness gracious. Okay, so we, we see three different springs here. If you look at the graphs, we see there's a blue line, a green line, and a black line. Okay, if we just look at the black line here, notice that the period of oscillation, oops, I'm gonna write out. Period of oscillation for the black one goes from here. Oops. We see that it has a lower period of oscillation. Okay, assuming that these masses are all equal, that means that this is the tightest spring that we have, or the loosest spring we have. Okay, the green one, let's look at the green line, has a different period of oscillation, and the blue one has the fastest, um, has the, the smallest period, the highest frequency as it oscillates back and forth. Okay, so it would be the tightest spring. The period of oscillation of a mass spring system depends on the mass being oscillated and the spring constant of the spring. Okay, so mass being measured in kilograms, which is here, and our old friend K, the spring constant. 
Okay, just as a reminder here, mass should be in kilograms. Spring constant is in newtons per meter. Okay, newtons per meter. Those two variables together, those two units, would give us the period in seconds, which is what we want it to be in order to find the time. Okay. Last thing we'll look at today is the energy involved in simple harmonic oscillators. When the energy of, of an oscillator is constant throughout, okay, the total energy is constant. When the object is at its maximum peaks, like where I'm putting the, the red stars, that is when the, in this case, the spring is stretched to a maximum value, and therefore the spring potential energy is the greatest. As it passes through the equilibrium position, where I'm putting the blue stars, that is when the, the spring is no longer stretched and all of the energy has been converted into kinetic energy. That's where the uh, oscillator will be traveling the fastest. So at maximum amplitude, potential energy is at a maximum. At the equilibrium position, kinetic energy is at a maximum. Here's another way of looking at the energy. This graph on the left is for position. You see that as it passes through the equilibrium position, we're making that dotted line, the kinetic energy is a maximum up here at the top, and the potential energy is zero. Okay. At the maximum amplitude points, we see that uh, kinetic energy is zero. That's where it's stopping and changing direction. And the potential energy is at a maximum as well. Okay, so that's where the string is stretched to a maximum or where the uh, height of the pendulum is the greatest. If we were to look at that graph versus time, we see two important things. First off, that my total energy remains constant all the way throughout. Okay, so that black line is the total energy in our system. And the other important thing is we see that there's a constant change between, between potential and kinetic energy. So on this graph here, the gray line, or the blue line, is the kinetic energy. Okay, so it starts here. And the red line is the potential. So notice that it's constantly alternating from potential to kinetic as it goes through. Okay, so simple harmonic oscillators, this is a different way of describing motion, repeats back and forth, constant change of energy from potential to kinetic and back and forth um, as an object goes back and forth through its motion. Thanks.